Hello all, welcome to the Windows API exploitation recipes for Red and Blue Teams course at Pentester Academy. My name is Vivek Ramachandran and I will be the instructor for this course. Now, of course, before we begin, why have this course in the first place? So if you look at modern uh, large enterprises today, you would find that we have red and blue teams which do a variety of exercises to emulate adversaries, right? The red team tries to go ahead and innovate on different ways by which break-ins can happen and the blue team tries to first of all detect that and then put an end to it. Now, if you were to look at modern adversaries, they have all the three essential components required to pull off an extremely advanced attack, which is a team, a group of highly skilled technical people, uh, money and investment to get all the best tools, training, whatever the team needs, and finally, time. So a modern adversary can spend days, weeks, months, even years trying to break into a target. Now, if we look at how traditionally we were approaching the problem, then one would end up using third-party tools like the Metasploit framework or many other publicly available or purchasable tools and products. The key problem with using them for red-blue team exercises is the fact that most of these frameworks and products are quite easily detectable right, by modern security solutions. Uh, you know, to an extent, they've been really fingerprinted quite well. Apart from that, you also have the prior knowledge problem, right? Uh, your blue team members might have actually learned the basics using many of these tools, uh, you know, which are available from third parties, which makes it extremely easy for them to actually create indicators of compromise and then push those rules and policies to stop the attack. So in the very true sense, it is not possible to have and emulate a modern powerful adversary using these third party tools. And this is really where red and blue teams need to look and probably already are at custom code. Now, why use custom code to go ahead and emulate modern adversaries. Now, if you look at a modern adversary, they have a specific task goal in mind, right? And that is exactly what their code does, which means there is not going to be any bloat, no additional libraries, no extra code, which can be easily fingerprinted because it has been picked up from other sources. None of that. Also at the very same time, most custom code from modern adversaries is going to be tightly coupled with the target environment, which is in many cases, the adversary might know about the defenses you might already have in place. Uh, the best example, of course, is Stuxnet, right? Something very specific to the target environment. Now, because we are using custom code, uh, anyone who's probably done pen testing, even, even for a year or so, knows that AV evasion and most uh, IDS IPS evasion is actually quite trivial, right? Simply because, of course, when you use custom code, it is one of a kind. Uh, at the very same time, because you're using it for specific targets, generally there is no mass deployment, which means you know, the AV vendor is not seeing this in a hundred different sites. And hence, uh, this is probably the only location it exists. So there isn't any available signature, right? Of course, uh, you would have to make sure that you beat some of the heuristics these defense mechanisms might have. But as we've seen in a lot of cases, this is quite easy to beat when we use custom code. And this would be a real simulation of a powerful adversary. Uh, on a slightly more humorous note, 
Uh, why use custom code? Well, there is only so many times that you can run MSF Venom and try to see if you manage to encode the payload in such a way that nothing on virus total picks it up, right? Only so many times you can run MSF Venom and Veil. So these are some of the really good reasons why red blue teams should move towards custom code. So what is going to be the training methodology? Now this is a vast subject and this is really where I do not want to go ahead and make this an extremely programmer centric course, right? People who've looked at my Python course or assembly course or even the JavaScript one know that I like to focus almost immediately on the security pen testing aspects of things. So we are going to be using a building block approach. The idea would be to take up specific tasks and then to look at how to solve these tasks so that you have code which you can use now. Now, once we go through each of these small building blocks, you'll actually find that you will be able to build larger code on top of this, which may include payloads, CNC, whatnot, right? Now the assumptions, of course, when we are looking at custom code, uh, I'm looking at the post exploitation phase, right? Uh, we aren't going to look at exploit research or other vectors through which someone is actually breaking in. That is a completely different topic. The assumption here that the attacker has been able to at least get some form of code execution. Uh, he may have extremely low privileges and from there we can figure out how to you know, escalate privileges and so on and so forth. But the assumption is post exploitation. And this is a quite a good assumption to make. Uh, if you read one of Microsoft's uh, recent enterprise cloud red teaming uh, kind of reports which they have, they have a very interesting quote from Michael Hayden, the former director of the NSA and CIA where he specifically says uh, one should assume that they've already been penetrated, right? So that is the assumption we are going to make as well. And then we look at how we can use custom code to do extremely interesting things, which might make it very difficult uh, for the blue team to go ahead and pick it up. Okay, so the prerequisites. Uh, Almost everything we are going to do is actually going to be in C using the Windows API. Now, if you're asking why not have this course in PowerShell, C Sharp, or maybe even, you know, Railgun kind of a facility, well, the key thing is remember that all of these, whether it is PowerShell, C Sharp, or, you know, trying to use Railgun, all of that eventually internally just uses the Windows C API. Right, so I'd like to look at the absolute core C API. Now you can very easily go ahead and use that in PowerShell and other places, right? We have a fantastic course on PowerShell by Nikhil Mittal on Pentester Academy. Check that out. Uh, he would have talked about some of these things there as well, but our key focus is going to be the Windows C API and seeing how we can use that for red blue teams. Now, the other assumption I'm going to make is you do understand the basics of pen testing and post exploitation, which means you know the basics of things like, okay, what is a payload, right? What is a bind shell, a reverse shell, uh, some basics of persistence, backdoors, etc. I am not assuming too much, but when I throw terms at you as, okay, why don't we look at how to create a custom reverse shell? Uh, I would expect that you already know what reverse TCP shells are or reverse HTTPS shell is, etc. Right? Uh, at the very same time, the very basics of an operating system's functionality, such as what is a process, what is a thread, really just a working knowledge should be sufficient. Okay, so the software and hardware requirement. Well, we will do everything on the latest and greatest, which is uh, we are going to be using Windows 10, which as we have heard is the last version of Windows. So it looks like this slide set isn't going to get outdated, right? 
you can download an evaluation version, right? If you if you're a Linux guy or an OSX guy, and you don't want to buy a license just for an eval. Uh, UASN purpose, you can download this, install everything and try this class out. Uh, we are going to be using Visual Studio 2017 at this time of creating this video. We have the release candidate, uh, but I'm sure this is going to work uh, for later releases as well as for, you know, a couple of past releases. You can use the express version or the professional version. It's just up to you. Uh, the code example should work on both right fantastic so that's all i have for this introduction video uh, if you're enjoying your time on pen tester academy please do go ahead and give us a shout out on uh, twitter or facebook or anywhere and tell your friends and colleagues i'm really excited about this course and see you in the next video thank you